Hey YouTube, um, well I just got two nice fertile leopard gecko eggs from my bell hat radar female, Manga, and she's right back there, she's a really pretty female, and she still has a ton of weight on her, she really does well with maintaining her weight, so um, yeah this is her second year breeding, so hopefully I'll get a ton of eggs from her, and I bred her to a max no radar, so the goal is max no radars and um, radars, that's pretty much my goal. Or Max No Bells or something along those lines. And Max Nose is a codom gene, so I have a 1 4 chance of hitting a Max No Radar. Um, I have a 1 4 chance of hitting a Radar, so that's a 1 half chance of hitting a Radar. And I get a um, 1 4 chance of hitting a Max No Het for Radar. And I get a 1 4 chance of hitting a Bell Het for Radar. So really it's um, half chance for Bells, half chance for max snowbells. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to show you a fertile leopard gecko egg and what it looks like. And this video is basically a how to incubate your leopard gecko egg video. So I'm putting that in between my legs. Hopefully it doesn't slide like it feels like it is right now. So basically just take the egg, candle, and check. I'm going to just pick this up for you guys because I want to see that. Sorry, it's a little bit shaky because I'm doing this with one hand. There is the target. That shows that the egg's fertile. That's the red embryo inside. There's a dot. I call it a target. Um, other people could have different names for it. But um, that's the embryo inside the egg. So both these eggs have it. So my next step is I'm going to show you guys how to incubate your eggs. And it doesn't matter if they turn or something in the beginning, to be quite truthful. Don't try to turn them a lot, but like, um, if it flips over when you're getting it out, it doesn't matter. So, but try to get it the way that they were laid. That's my honest um, advice to you guys. Um, it doesn't really matter if it's flipped over. If it happens, it happens, and don't yell at people about it. And yeah. And another common misconception is that first-time clutches are infertile. Um, I just have to say, second year I bred, I misproved that. I got manga, mango out of it, and she was a first-time breeder's egg. It was her first egg that she laid, one of the two. And this gecko hatched out, and that's living proof. So, all those people who say, like, oh, first clutch, it's always infertile. That's wrong. They don't have to be always infertile. I have two clutches. I have a clutch from her that's about to hatch out in like two days or a week or six days really. Um, and I have a new fertile clutch from her that I didn't show you guys. That's all. She was bred to a max no radar as well. So hopefully same odds as her mother. And um, she had two fertile eggs too. So that just goes to show you that fertile eggs are fertile. And she had fertile eggs the first time she did. Um, and I'm also breeding these two, which are first-time breeders, so, and her, so, all first-time breeders. So just had to say that. It's a common misconception. All right, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get some type of hatching material. So I'm going to use Hatchrite for this video, which is just perlite with water gels in it. That's basically what Hatchrite is. That's my honest opinion. And it says already mixed. You don't have to mix it. Just pour. Nah, you got to mix it with water. I'm just saying. I did that before, killed my leopard gecko eggs, so I'm helping you guys out, I'm telling you, you have to mix this stuff with water. Um, now, vermiculite you could also use, regular perlite you can always use, of course, no fertilizers or no additive um, stuff in it, all natural um, type of stuff, no like miracle Grow stuff. Um, you can use Supreme Hatch, I know that's another good one, and that's about it. Um, those are the four I really know of, Hatch right, Perlite, Vermiculite, and... Um, Supreme Hatch and Hatch Rate I mean, Vermiculite comes in different sizes, so you could get the coarse stuff or you could get the fine stuff. I really do like Vermiculite, so I suggest it to a lot of people um, if you're buying it. This stuff is really expensive, and you can get Vermiculite for like even cheaper, and it's way worth it. So um, definitely suggest getting Vermiculite. And the reason why I was showing you the water bottle is because when you get um, when you're making the mixture, you always want clean water, clean fresh water. And I just went downstairs and I re, uh, filled it out, filled it up. I poured out the old stuff and put it now. 
So you always want clean water. That's my honest advice to you guys. And you're going to want a calculator. So, um, yep, that's what you're going to want. And you're going to want a gram scale and a Ziploc container. The Ziploc container, um, I'm saying this really fast just to get through the video and do all the work that I need to get done. Um, you're going to want to put a pinhole in it towards the top. I'm trying to get that to zoom in. But it's really not... See that pinhole right there? You're going to want to get a pinhole in there. So that's my honest advice to you guys. Um, get the pinhole in there. Alright. You're going to want to tear your uh, thing. So put it on your gram scale and clear it to zero. And wow, is it not focusing or what? So yep, that's what you're going to want to do. I'm going to put this in between my legs. Hopefully you guys can see. And hopefully it doesn't fall too. And I'm going to open up the hatch, right? And you pour it in. So a good height. And the reason why you poke the pinhole at the top is you want to, um, what do you call it? You want the pinhole to be exposed to the air so that, um, the eggs can breathe and it's okay. I'm just going to pour it in until I get to five, I guess. It should be in like two seconds. There we go. Alright, so that says 105 grams of this, and you can see even in here, that's water gel right there. That's perlite right there, the big white thing, and that's a water gel. So that's all hatch rate is. Just letting you guys know. So that's what you pay so much for. Um, I'm not really a big fan, but I have like three bags of it, so I gotta use it up. So, um, yeah. So anyway, what you're gonna want to do... It's one part of your hatching material to 0.8 parts water. So what we do is we have 105, right? So I'm turning on my calculator. 105 times 0.8. You guys can see that? I hope. And sorry it's so shaky. Um, so, yep. So I get 84 grams I got to add in. And there's two ways you can do this. You can do 105 plus 84. And you could do this, and then you could just spray water until you get up to 189 grams. Or you could just press tear and get 84 grams of water. Which that's what I'm going to do. So you just spray it. And I'm going to put down this, actually. Um, I'm just going to talk for a little bit. So you spray it around, actually. Here, let me just show you. You spray it around, you go in a round motion until you get up to it, and that's pretty much what you do. And then you can just keep it there and then go around again and stuff like that. It really doesn't matter as long as you just spray um, all of it, in a sense. Um, so, yeah. The other thing that I wanted to say was, um, lately, um, I've been pretty busy. Um, a lot of school stuff and SAT, ACT preparing, and um, I just got a new truck, and... Um, and I have three baby quail chicks that I didn't show you guys, which I'll show you in this video, hopefully, if I have enough time, which I'm pushing for. Um, so, yeah. So, again, it's um, a hatching material. Um, so, it's one part hatching material, 0.8 parts water. And I do this, and other people do it by weight. So, you just times the grams. So, you find out how much hatching material you put in there, which I found out mine was 105, and I times it by 0.8, and I got... Uh, 84. So that's how much water you want to put in to it. And yeah, so I did a little bit over. I always do a little bit over. That's just kind of like a tradition. Other people do it a couple extra squirts for good luck. And basically, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to poke a hole in there. And what I do is I put my finger around the side and I always get the water off. And when you're incubating eggs, you never want condensation on the lid. If you see that, what I would suggest doing would be either get more hatch right and redo a batch and make it the right way if you made it the wrong way. Or you could leave open the uh, lid for a little bit and then put it back on and see if the condensation doesn't come back. So those are my tips to you guys. Um, these eggs will be incubated for females, and let me go over that. Um, females are incubated at roughly 82 degrees to 84, 
um, and males are incubated at 87 degrees to 90. Um, a mix is in between that range, like 85 to 87, I would say. That's a mix. Um, that's pretty fair to say that number. So, um, yep, I'm going to put the eggs in. I'm not marking up my eggs, so, yeah. Haven't marked them up in a while, and I've actually haven't had as much molding. So, I don't know. I don't think it's necessary. I've seen some breeders not mark up their eggs, and I'm finding out that um, I'm seeing that it looks a lot better when you don't mark them up, and I think that they're hatching out more. But we'll see this season, because I'm not marking up any eggs, and I know I marked up eggs before. So, um, yeah, the egg's actually 4 grams. That's kind of interesting. These eggs are normal-sized eggs, I would say, personally. My Eclipse Het Bell female, she lays these huge, long eggs. She just laid a clutch, actually, yesterday, and I put it in the egg container. So, um, yep. Those eggs are in. That's how you incubate leopard gecko eggs. And I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, video. Um, I thought it was very informative, personally. Um, you guys can tell me what you think. And, yeah. And uh, most of my eggs this season are going to be incubated for female. If you guys have any requests in the future for a male, um, let me know and or comment below and say that, like, you you think males would sell or something because um, I think I'm going to incubate for mostly females and stuff. But um, anyway, I'm going to show you something really cool in the meanwhile. These chicks are solid black, two of them. I ha hatched out two from, I screwed up on the eggs actually myself. This is the oldest one. He's jumping around like crazy. I'll grab the youngest one. They're solid black and they have these black feet too. So kind of cool. Just wanted to show that. Really cool. And then that, this is the second, and then the oldest one's the jumpiest one. He's getting his flight feathers, too. You can tell. And he's staying black, too, like a brownish black, so it's kind of cool to see how he'll uh, end up as an adult. He's getting really big, too. But whatever. Um, so let me show you the eggs before... This video ends in the eggs that are due to hatch. Um, I'm going to end it at 13. Um, here's two eggs that were just recently laid. Um, so I got those two eggs right here. And I have two very small eggs for my female mango. And they were laid, um, what do you call it, uh, three days ago, I believe sometime this week. And then this is a fertile leopard gecko egg that I believe is going to hatch out here shortly. Because I feel a baby inside and the egg is denting in so it's probably sucking up all the nutrients and this egg will probably be hatching out here very shortly. So stay tuned for this egg and this egg will also be hatching out so you can see how it's blown up that way. So these two eggs will probably be hatching out here shortly and in this one I'm used for Miculite, so just to show you guys a little bit of a comparison. And what I do is I, each clutch I get, i just been writing it down on a card, um, like this. Clutch laid there, and then I have numbers, one, two, three, four, five, like that. Um, and it just shows me about the clutches and when they're due to hatch. Like, this was the first clutch, here's the second clutch, here's the third clutch, here's the fourth. And the female's hopefully going to lay a fifth. So that's pretty much the end of this video, guys. Comment, rate, and subscribe, and tell me what you thought.